you know, I was a Premier League manager, say at year five, I'm at Burnley, we're not getting the investment, but I'm going, am I really going to walk away? Young English Premier League manager? Yeah, yeah. Where's your next one? So I was like, hang on a minute, stay and earn your spurs, keep keep fighting, keep working, keep earning your spurs until a, a point when people have to accept that you sort of know what you're doing. Because <laughs> they go, but well, you can't keep managing the Premier League if you don't know what you're doing. Yeah, Trust yeah. me, you can't do it. You can't do it. Was there a, a moment where you you predicted the way this was going to end? I think I think the the change of the change of ownership and when the dynamic of a the structural side of what we'd put in place starts changing, and then you go, do, you know, that's when you go, all right. Do you realise where you're taking this? Do you realise the challenges of explain what you mean to, by the well? So so we'd we'd formed a way of working at Burnley Football. Forget by the way, this is nothing to do with styles now, right? Mm. We've formed a way of operating, scouting science, analytics, blah, blah, blah. Of course, we're all open to newness and, and modern thinking and do you keep your eye on trends, but the department should be doing that anyway. And I believe they were. They're keeping an eye on, you know, whether it's analysis or, you know, we were looking at laser GPS instead of the normal GPS and all sorts of different things behind the scenes that we thought might add the inches. So you, you want to be doing that. You're looking down the road of, you know, how many times can you change it? But there's a base that was in place. And then when that starts changing, you start going, hang on a minute. If you're going to start changing that, we need to add that into the people that are here. You know, we can't just do one with the same people because the same people need changing as well. Do you get what I mean? Does that make sense? So, you know, if you bring in six or seven players here and a new structure here, guess what? They only know the new structure. But the ones who have been under this structure and then they have to move that, whoa, what's going on here? So then you get an odd reaction and it starts changing the view and then – you know, yourself, some of your top heads of department are going, am I, who am I answering to? I, I think I was answering to you, but I'm answering to you now. Yeah. They're only small things, but they start chipping away. And then your staff start coming in, who, who, which one am I answering to? Yeah. So, so then, did you have that? It was growing. Yeah. Not in a vicious way, though. Yeah. In, a, in an explanatory way. You know, the new ownership went, oh, we want to try and bring this in and bring that in and bring yeah. that. And I'm like, all right, but it's a slow burner. It needs to be one step at a time. Not many, in my experience, um, well, not actually, well, yeah, kind of in my experience, but also in my knowledge of owners and um, directors of football, when they get put in place, guess what they want to do? They want to change it, don't they? Because yeah. they, they want to put their mark on it. You know what I mean? It's very rare. They just literally go, right, crack on. So some I had to be flexible with, and I was flexible with, to go, all right, we'll, we'll see if we can mould that and adjust it, recruitment and stuff like that. The positive side of that was a more open-mindedness about European players and stuff. Obviously, we brought in Val Vegorst and... Maxwell Cornet, which I've been sort of pushing the old ball. Look, we need to start opening up. We need to start taking more risks with our player signing um, along the lines of giving us a different view and how we play and all that sort of stuff. So that was a refreshing side of it. And then the, the the other side of it, the challenge, was when you go, why are you sort of mixing and matching these ideas? Why are you, you know, trying to sort of twist and tweak things that don't really – well, they need it maybe over time, but not like that, you know, and that was going to be the biggest challenge. So – Trying to blend that new thinking into the structure that was there, buy-in from everyone, that's difficult. That's the most difficult thing. So and what advice games, would you give to like new owners? So people listening to this might be going into a new business or they might be like teachers going into a new classroom. But in relation to your experience with football, what advice would you give an owner if they buy a football club like Burnley? What sort of the first three steps you'd, you'd advocate this should every do? bit of advice, but what I would say is that I think you've, it depends on what club you're buying into, quite obviously, and um, what's there. Yeah, again, the biggest thing for me, right, I'll, I'll tell you this, and, and like I say, I'm not going to start preaching. Just take a breath. Just right. look at what's going on and don't think you're going to see it all in one day because you're not. Take a breath, see it working. You know, it's old big brother cameras, right? You know, they say the psychology say it's like three weeks and then you start switching off or whatever it is, you know, a week and yeah. your brain starts switching off. So if you go in, right, and you're an owner and you're in there every day, guess what we're going to do for three weeks? It's all like, hi, hi, owner, you know, we're all working like crazy. Yeah. Then three, we'll call it three weeks, but starts changing. Then you go, right, now is a true view of what's going on. That's what I'd say. If, if you're a hands-on owner, don't forget. If you're a hands-off owner, and you're delegating to everyone, that's a different ball game. Yeah. But even the next in command, so let's call it director of football. Just take a breath and absorb it. That's what I think is important. But yeah. it's not I'm not preaching, but that's what I'd do. I'd say to the director for right, call your jets, take your time, just let people revert back to being normal, not this newness. You know what yeah. I mean? And just give it a window to then go, right, 
Now we've had a look at it. I've spoke to all the staff. I've gathered the information. Now where are we going to take it? So the new owners come in and the director of football comes in and changes start to happen, right? You can look at that and go, well, the owners made changes and they weren't the right ones. But that doesn't inform you for your next job. I'm interested in, you know, I think you're great at self-reflection. You're a bright guy. You go to loads of different sports and learn from them. Do you, could you have done more, do you think, to either embrace the change or work with the change? Or do you feel you'd cave absolutely everything and it just... I actually thought it was interesting for me, right? So I actually thought, right, okay, so now imagine, take yourself out of this and now you, you're in your helicopter and you're flying to a new job and this structure is in place. So I was actually thinking, right, okay, so... So what you th that's how you worked it in your Yeah, head. I was thinking, right, okay, yeah. don't don't resist everything. Mm -hmm. Learn with it because what happens if the next club, somewhere down the line, I like that. Yeah. So now I was actually saying to the staff, whoa, 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 staff are getting a bit fidgety. They're going, oh, you know, I've been asked to do this. I'm, asked I'm going, yeah, because that's newness. That's what happens, you know. So if we all go down to the next club, they might be going, right, what are you doing this? What are you doing that? What are you doing that? So that that's part of mm -hmm. development. Well, I can't preach development then not develop myself, can I? So I had to sit there and go, right, okay, speak to the owner, speak to the owner, right, what do you want from us? What do you want to share? What are you hoping to do? How can we do this? How? Speak to the staff. The analyst going, oh, they've asked me to do this. I was going, yeah, that's your job. They're asking you to do your job. They're just asking you to do it in a different way. So do it. Yeah. You know, and then feed it back. That's, yeah. you know. So no, I was, I was all right with that, actually. I was like, right, okay. But not losing sight of the basic principle of, why are you doing that? You still got to win games. And we weren't winning games. And I knew what was wrong with that. And what was that? Well, we hadn't we hadn't invested. The the team were losing that 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 edge. Yeah. There's an edge on a team. Let, let's you know talk about I mean? this then. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's I love this idea of renewal because I think it applies to any walk of life, any business, even it even applies to parenting. You can't just keep doing the same thing year after year and expecting your kids to respond. So, did you sense a lack of not even bringing in more quality, but just bringing in a different? group it was a slow burn it was it was before that you know so it's nothing to do just to be clear there's nothing to do with the ownership change it was yeah. before it was it was it was everyone involved not just the new because the new owners would argue we didn't want to put a load of money in because we were trying to buy the club the olders are arguing we didn't want to put a load of money because we're trying to sell the club so there's no fault here it's just a, a natural thing Absolutely. that happened is yeah. when when the investment was needed it wasn't there yeah. we know the players are getting older you know, and some are losing that just as an edge. It's hard to describe football. People generally know it when the players are just losing. Not all, you know. And how does that or, manifest itself yeah. to you? How do you see that? I think, it's, well, I've been in the game since I was 16. Yeah. You, you can almost smell it on a person, you know what I mean? When they're just too many excuses start creeping in. Right. And they do for this sort of, um, I know what I need mentality. You know, I shouldn't be doing that. I know what I need. And you go, oh, that's the first warning signs. Yeah. You know, players always start when they get to the end period and they just start softening a bit. So, oh, I know what I need now. And you go, whoa, 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 hang on a minute. You know, you're forgetting what you really need and replacing it what you think you really need. You know, so yeah. there's a difference there. Yeah. Then you got the, the mentality of a group who have been listening to us a long time. Our rhetoric suddenly becomes, is it the same? You know, can, what are you changing? If you're not changing the people, by the way, what are you changing? How are you changing things? And all these things just start adding little tiny bits. And without refreshing as in people, how do you change that? So, yeah, again, we, we you know, you can only do new managed thinking so many times. Yeah. Because they're the same people. So, therefore, you're going, right, okay, we need to change the actual people. Usually yeah. the players, all the staff, of course. That's why they change managers and they change coaches. We need to change some of the people. And we just never had the finance in place at the right time to start doing that because it could have been done a couple of years before. Mm. Then back to your point. So we're not just talking about, like, at Burnley, with all due respect, you're unlikely to get, like, true, amazing quality that is just like, wow, Premier League ready every minute, you know, they come in. But just the fact there's new people in, it just stimulates. Yeah, We were saying before, I was... We we're talking about it, and I said it, it's like you know the kids in the play in the in the classroom. A new kid comes in, they're all on the best behavior, yeah, yeah. and it just stimulates a change. Yeah. And then after three or four weeks, the, the kid becomes a normal kid, and they go, oh. <laughs> you know, that's it. But it stimulates a change. So you sometimes it's not about bringing in world beers; it's about bringing in a newness where everyone sort of rubs off on each other slightly differently. Maxwell Corne did it for a bit. Mm. Val Vegors did it for a bit, but you got Woody going out, one coming in. So, you know, someone going, all oh, right, I'm not sure about that. Stephen DeFore definitely did it earlier on, you know, when it, before he had a bad injury, but the way he was. Some just naturally stimulate just because they're there, 
just because they're physically in the building, new faces, new change, different ways of operating, just naturally gives a bit of a stimulus. And you'd spoken previously about when you had a bad run once where the leadership group amongst that dressing room had asked you to step out of the room and they took hold of the reins for a while to, to reinvigorate it once you were um, in a bad run and it was a post-Christmas period that things turned around. What about your leadership group in this time? Didn't really do. I didn't really do a leadership group. I think that was just the older players who right. sort of went took took ownership, if you like. Yeah. Just said, Gaffer, we, we need to have a word amongst them because they'd realised basically the penny drops. You know, when you've, you your voice is only so powerful. In the end, a few went, "Hang on, lads, this mm. ain't right." You know what I mean? Yeah. And because we had an open environment with the trust in each other type thing, I went, "Cool, you you crack on, lads." But they weren't really a leadership group. Right. I was always a, I was always a bit wary about that. I mean, because well, because if you two are in the leadership group, and no, I'm not, what am I thinking? I'm going, oh, I should be in there. So, who do you define yeah. as being the leadership group? So, yep. I've always been a little bit, hmm, it's a bit like means leadership. testing your players, and there's always someone on the cusp yeah, that feels yeah, hard bit. And, and you get the wrong one on the cusp, and he goes, Well, I disagree. Yeah. And then suddenly you get this sort of friction. So, I've been more into just people who are naturally want to come and talk, or they. You know, right. you do, I mean, the obvious ones, right? So not a group, but you'd have your captain, right? Usually your captain's there for a reason. He's there because he's got a quite a solid, tight, maybe a very good performer or whatever, but usually for a reason and probably pretty consistent. Probably your next captain, if you like, assistant captain, whichever you want to call it, you know, probably similar. So you might now and again pick their brain. Sometimes, you know, horse whispering, as I call it, you don't have to have a big meeting with them. You just walk up to them and just go, well, you know, what's your thoughts? You know, anything? Everything all right? Don't have to be my biggest rule actually within that. There's always a rule within a rule, but was to not be sneaky. I'd never asked them to sneak about. Right. Never. I always said to the guy, "You'll not be getting me saying, hey, you know what, so and so thinking." I said, mm. "That ain't gonna happen." But if it's something serious, you need to come and tell me. Yeah. And if you think it's trouble, you need to come and tell me. Or someone's got something wrong in their life they need help with, you need to tell me. But I didn't like that. I didn't like sneaking about. It wasn't for me that. But was that ever a, a possibility that you would lean on? your more senior players or your more reliable players to harness the dressing room, to reinvigorate it? Sometimes, like I say, you just have a casual chat. It wouldn't be a big meeting. You know, Woney or T Tony or Steve Stone, they'd just pop, you know, oh, what's your thoughts? And they'd go, oh, I was chatting to so-and-so. That's the difference between, you know, there's a fine line there, but it's a difference that between sneaking about and almost like, hey, you know, that's yeah, not yeah. a word, and just having a conversation. Sometimes it'd be an open conversation. So we'd all be sitting there and I might ask you, but you're listening, so you're more than welcome to join in. Do you right. know what I mean? You know, I'm just having a coffee, just pop, hey, what was your thoughts? You know, did you see so and so the weekend? What was your thoughts of that? But that might be linking in to something that's happened in your group, yeah. your NLP and the fact that that happened in another group. You go, what do you think of that? And they give you an opinion. Then you go, why oh, didn't you tell me that you thought that though? Yeah. Oh, all oh, right. Yeah. All right. Well, it was all right for them, but not for you then. You know what I mean? And then you go like, oh, you see him going, oh, okay. Yeah. So, you know, there's different ways to get information. But like I say, I preferred to talk it out. I didn't really like the, you know, some environments and managing, you know, have certain people, they're almost like, hey, hey, come and tell us what's going on. And that yeah. wasn't for me. Right. Not really my bag. Though. Having been at Burnley and done such a good job for so long, you're suddenly in this slightly alien environment where you feel the lack of renewal along the squad. You feel a few changes from the new owners and it, it all comes together. What about you personally? Like the only real value for this is for you to reflect on what you could have done better as a leader. What What is different about the Sean Dyche that walks back into a, a football dressing room in the next few months from what you went through in this period? Just a quick one to say thank you so much for watching this content on the High Performance channel. We would love it if you would subscribe. You know, most people that watch what we do don't subscribe. If you can subscribe, we can make this bigger, better, bolder than we've ever done before. So hit subscribe right now and help the High Performance podcast make a real difference to the world. See you soon.